So today we're going to talk about uh, putting the texture on the surface. Uh, you can do that uh, after you throw them and uh, put it on the uh, uh, leather hard stage. So after you've uh, wait till your clay has been at the leather hard stage, uh, you can do some uh, chattering, carving, put all your texture on it. And <coughs> here is uh, some of the uh, samples here. So I've been showing people how to do the uh, chattering using a special tool that I designed it and put all the texture on it. And uh, you can put this kind of a texture. And even this kind of a carving, okay, the texture. So that's the, uh, these uh, two are at the data hard stage. And when you want to carve something like this, uh, you have to do it, uh, I would say that at the bone dry stage. Okay, bone dry stage. So you can have more dimension and you have a, you will, you will have nice design on your, 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 your patterns. So first you use a pencil, draw on the uh, uh, bone, bone dry uh, part. And then uh, you use a knife to uh, cut out that and then you just scrape up the clay. So it's very easy to scrape, but it takes time to, to do it because uh, it's very time consuming. I did this one for five hours. Oh. On this one, yeah, five hours. It's very detailed, you cut, carve it. Okay, but if you want to do just the chattering, it's very easy, okay? 30 seconds, one minute, you will get your chattering mark, okay? So let me do a uh, <coughs> demo on the uh, chattering mark. So now this is the, the bowl that I usually wait till at this stage, you might want to pass around and feel it, okay, feel it. Uh, this, I thrown it um, two days ago. Okay. Depending on the weather, okay? Yeah. Like the other day that it's very hot, yeah. maybe in the afternoon you can do it. Okay, you throw in the morning, and once the rib is firm enough, you flip over and turn it upside down and let it dry. And maybe uh, by the night time you will be able to trim it. Okay. Or the next day, okay, the next day. Um, uh, this is the uh, porcelain, Coleman porcelain. Okay, okay, Coleman. So that's the uh, the stage I'm waiting for to uh, trim it. Okay. Um, also here I I have a special tool that I want to show you. Oh, by the way, I um, designed and made my own trimming tools, and these are all my trimming tools, different shapes and uh, different length of the tip. So they will do uh, many, many different uh, tricks on your part while, while you're trimming, okay? So these are the tools. And these are made out of uh, stainless steel, stainless steel, okay? And recently I've been uh, developing this kind of a tool. It's a measuring tool. Uh, so you're gonna measure from the top of here to the bottom here, and then from top of here to here, you subtract the difference you get a reading. You know exactly how thick your base is. And then when you're trimming, you can keep on checking it. See how far you can go, okay? So uh, let's do this one. And this is in the millimeters, so it's about 90, okay? It's about 100. So 100 minus 90 is 10. So you know the thickness of the bottom is about, from here to here, it's about 10 millimeters. So while you're trimming it, say that you wanna leave the bottom like within two or three millimeters. So you know that you can go down seven millimeters without going through, or without going, leaving the bottom too thick, okay? So that's the very, uh, very useful tool for checking the bottom. I made it. I designed and made it, yeah. Uh, I have it here, yeah. Okay, so now we wanna, the wheel is on. So usually I, I wet a little bit here and wet a little bit on the rim. I'm just going to use the water to stick the pot on the wheel head. OK. 
okay? And then you just apply pressure and you put the stick on here, okay? Uh, if you are not so sure, you can put the clay coil here. But the reason why I'm doing this is that when I'm trim, I will be able to reach the very bottom corner here, okay? So that's the reason I, I when I trim my part, I usually do that way, okay? I usually do that way. <coughs> and for general trimming, I usually use my, this one is, a, I call it number two. It's a shoulder, so it doesn't vibrate. Sometimes you get chattered automatically because um, the tool is you holding at certain angle or that the tool that is too tall, you get vibration. But most of the time you don't, right? If you don't want it, dead, this is the tool to go, okay? Number two. So there are lots of ways to, because all the, all the angles, it's been uh, sharpened. So you can use that to trim all different angles. Even like this, you can trim it. Okay. So if you want to buy the uh, trimming tool, uh, I think Clay Pen has a booth outside. You can go there and uh, check it out. So we were talking about uh, the thickness of the bottom is 10 millimeters, right? So we're gonna go like seven to eight millimeters down. Okay, if you're not sure, well, your trimming down, you can check it. Okay, this is now about seven. Okay, so you can stop or you can just do a very final cleaning. Okay, so I will just do the final cleaning here. And I usually undercut here, so when I'm glazing, hopefully the glaze will stop right here. There's a little, I put a, a little corner here. And also if you have a, a, a nice thickness here, the outside and inside part you can trim accordingly. So if you have a nice thickness here, you're going to end up with the more even wall on here because you can compare the outside part and the inside part, okay? So before I do the chattering, I like the surface to be smooth. So I let me... So you smooth the surface. Uh, let me do a couple of different chattering mark here. So if you're using this corner, okay, th this corner. So I'm gonna use this corner here. Okay, so that's the corner. And now I'm gonna use the whole length. Okay. Okay. And then um, let me put a little. Can I share some? 
Yeah, So on the piece, I put three different kind of uh, cherry mark. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, if the the uh, clay when you trim it stick still stick on it, I use a hair dryer to dry a little bit. It will be easier. For me to just brush it up the uh, the clay, and then um, <clears throat> this is my stamp. I usually put my lamp here. Before I do that, I usually like to uh, burnish the foot. Okay. And after I finish trimming, the clay is a little bit, uh, still a little bit thick. I consider it my normal uh, trimming, but uh, just to uh, show you the uh, texture, you can pass around. Okay, so that's the uh, chattering mark put in on the uh, surface of the pot. Okay. Um, I usually, uh, when I am glazing it, uh, since the uh, chattering shows better uh, if you're using the uh, uh, stands or under glazes, so I usually put the under glazes instead of a glaze. But if you want to choose the glaze, you might want to choose the glaze that can show the contrast thicker and thinner. Maybe a saladon is a good glaze to, to show your chattering mark anything with your texture. I usually like to uh, wedge a little bit of uh, the clay even from a fresh bag of so that uh, to wake up the clay. So I'm going to throw up the hump. So I'm just focusing on the top of uh, the clay and after I finish throwing it, I could uh, just cut it off. And to get the uh, uh, sodium silicate texture, you want to be able to stretch it so that you get the texture better. Okay, so you can start with a narrow, narrow cylinder. Uh, yeah, even this size of a bowl, I throw up a hum. Okay, so you want to get a nice clean, so uh, so in silicate texture, you could uh, smooth the surface. Okay, or if you want to put some uh, texture, 
Now is a good time to put the uh, texture on it. Maybe at this side I do a different texture. Okay. Right. Okay. So you could buy this online. Okay. It's, we call what we also call it a uh, liquid glass or water glass. And I usually don't uh, brush all the way till the to the rim because the rim is going to touch the lips. So, uh, what? Why I'm putting this? Uh, do you see the ball there? The one in the corner, the brown one. That's the uh, texture from the uh, sodium silicate. This kind of material. Yeah, when uh, you, after I brush it on, I'm going to dry the surface a little bit and then I'm going to expand it. And when you expand it, you see the, the crackle surface. So our topic is talking about the texture, how to apply the texture uh, onto your pot. Okay, so that's why well, we're going to focus on that. And you wanna, uh, you don't wanna over dry it, okay? So make sure once you see the uh, the shiny surface goes away, you have to stop, okay? Uh, yeah, the thicker you put it on, the bigger crackle. And also, you want to get a bigger crackle, leave your wall a little bit thicker when you expand it, you get a more larger crackle texture. So now you don't want to touch the outside, and all you need to do is just stretch from the uh, inside. So make sure you uh, lubricate Okay, you can put enough uh, slip on the inner, inner part. So, so let me stop it. And you can see the texture start to get crackle. Okay, let me stretch a little bit more here. So you can see that the difference on the surface 
I put it horizontal and straight line so you see the difference, right? So let me put it over here. Okay. So that's the uh, sodium silicate. You can scrap different textures so after you stretch the result will be different. Or sometimes I also use the uh, uh, after I throw a cylinder, I kind of tear apart the uh, newspaper and just kind of partially tape, put it on the different spots. So when after I brush the uh, sodium silicate, some spot has uh, more sodium silicate, some spot has a little bit less sodium silicate, some spot has no sodium silicate. So when you stretch the whole piece, you got so many different larger, small one, or even no. Uh, uh, crackle texture, so it will be very interesting to experiment that too. Okay, so I'm not going to show you here, but uh, you can do some experiment yourself. Okay, right now I'm going to show you the uh, different uh, texture using the uh, rotor. Okay, so in here we have uh, many different rotor blocks here. And, uh, you get this, okay, also from a clay supply store or even online, you will be able to get it. So we're gonna roll the texture on the surface and then I stretch it, okay. Um, the uh, sample is there in the corner, that one, the green and brown and a little bit white. So that's the uh, texture, okay, that piece. So this time I'm going to also just throw a um, small t-ball. And to be able to roll your uh, texture deep enough, okay, when you roll, you want your texture to be deep enough, okay. Uh, I have, um, uh, I think uh, this, this one is my invention, okay. So, To be able to uh, put the uh, texture that is deep enough, you need to have a support on the inside while you are rolling it. So I kind of throw a cylinder and then uh, hopefully, if you're not so sure, okay, hopefully this one will be able to drop inside, okay. Not too big, okay, not too big. If you throw big and it's hard for you to uh, compress it down, so just uh, enough for your cardboard to drop inside, okay. And then um, you just compress it and color it in. So you see that the whole piece is fitting nicely. On the uh, cardboard cylinder. And then uh, you want your text to roll nice and clear so you want to smooth the surface, okay. So now the uh, surface is nice and smooth. Right. You could roll it horizontally, okay? But uh, you just got to make sure that when you come up to the joint, you need to pull out your, your roller, okay? But uh, the way I do it, I roll it vertically, okay? Um, you want to um, roll it nicely without clay sticking on here. Uh, my way of doing it is, Dip it in the water, okay, dip it in the water. And you wanna hold down here, so you have a support. So you wanna roll from here. Is there a reason why you go vertical as opposed to horizontal? 
uh, just that the way I was talking that if you go horizontal, it's hard to get the, the, the joint, the, the match line exactly. So that's why I, I do it vertically. Okay, so I roll the texture nice and evenly here. Um, now, all you need to do is just pull out the cobble, okay? Um, I would like to show you how you uh, set up your... See that I have one piece of newspaper here. So, if you put two pieces of newspaper, it's easier for you to pull out, okay? So, two layers instead of one. Yeah, one sometimes you stick it in there and yeah, you it, it, it just break it, okay? So yeah, two pieces. And then you just peel, pick up, peel it slowly from the inside. Okay, pull it out. Right now, you wanna just put some water here or maybe a slip inside so that when you are stretching it, it's nice and smooth and slippery. I put one hand here, finger here to support it and stretch it out. Feel free if you have any question while I'm quiet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're just supporting the work at the bottom. Yes. The yeah. Yes. The finger here to support it. Okay. Yes. So that you don't uh, uh, you don't push that the wall there. You don't push it down. Mm -hmm. You have a finger there to support it. Uh, this is the uh, the same material people put it underneath to uh, oh, yes. it's a bad grapper yeah. Uh, yeah, I can just use a scissor to cut it. I got it free from um, Ensika. They, they put the uh, advertise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, that sponge yeah. mm -hmm. And if you want to get the rim that is a little bit uh, uneven, okay And after that, you just go and smooth it a little bit. Okay. Does that make it tough to drink out? No, it should be fine. Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, maybe a little bit wider here on the bottom. Um, cutting of the hump, this is the string I usually do uh, about this length, okay. I would say about maybe 10 inches long. Just tie the loop here, okay, you hold it so when you're cutting it, it doesn't slip up your fingers, okay. You just hold it on the crossover, 
hold it here. And I usually use my fingernail. You can even use a piece of uh, tool, okay, a rib, or even your wooden knife. You just cut a small indent here, okay? And then you can rest your string right there in the, in the indent. Okay, just rest right here, let go. So your, your string is resting there, so when you pull, you pull level, and you will be able to cut it level. Okay, be able to cut it level. So let's um, put it right here. So that's the uh, thickness I was talking about. Yeah. Okay, three millimeters in the base. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me do a larger one. Okay. Um, before I do that, I will show you how you roll your newspaper. Okay. There is also a trick on how to roll your newspaper. So we're talking about two pieces, right? So the first one doesn't matter. Just roll it. But you wanna roll your newspaper tight, okay? Very tight. Just tuck it in here. Now the next one, okay? Hopefully you wanna roll it like this direction. So when the wheel is spinning, while you push in your clay, color it in, it's the same direction, okay? Same direction. So if you have uh, the newspaper this way, the wheel is spinning, it's, it's going to get caught. So next one, when I roll, this part is going to go over like that instead of go over like that, okay? So this time I am going to do this way. So it's going that way, okay? Newspaper going that way. This might be uh, too much. I can tear it off. Put a little bit of water here so if it's a little bit better. Right. On. A little bit of a slip here. So you're gonna use the slip to glue the newspaper, okay? That's how you prepare your newspaper, okay? And now, let me Do we have a bat here or, or maybe just uh, after I throw it, I just cut it. A bat. A bat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, maybe eight pounds. Thank you. Are there any bats? Yeah, yeah, it's right here. Oh, right here, one. yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Let's 
good. I uh, wouldn't bet I would put a little bit of water here to help it to uh, stick. Oh, thank you. And also you want to uh, make sure that you put your clay in the center. Uh, for wooden bed, you can just use a water to draw a circle. So when you place the clay here, you have more idea that it's the center. And then I just slap it. This uh, slapping center better, it helps a lot. Because if you don't put it in the center, you're gonna spend a lot of effort trying to uh, push your clay. So this is good method to, to do it. All right. Okay, so that way I, I center, I usually just go take the outer part of the clay and try to move it down here. I don't squeeze it sky high and then I try to push down. It's a waste, waste my energy here. So I just like it this way better. And when you are opening your hole, and make sure that this wall is compressed while you are digging in. So usually I have my hand, my thumb, okay, hanging outside while I'm digging it. I'm doing the compressing. After I reach the right uh, thickness, I usually leave the bottom of around um, three-eighths of an inch. I compress the, the, the base a couple of times. Right. Um, make sure the cylinder is narrow while well, you try to lift your wall. It will be easier to uh, get it higher when your cylinder is a little bit, little bit narrow. Okay. And since the wall is a, a little bit still thick, so I will do the initial lifting using my finger, lifting from the inside. Okay, the outside is just stabilized. So I'm gonna lift this way. When you're doing that, how many 
fingers or are you actually pressing your fingers? All the fingers. All, fingers. all the fingers. Okay. Yeah. Has to be because it's strong. Yeah. Your hand hand finger has to be strong to be able to lift that thick of a clay. So use all your fingers. Do you attempt to make them kind of mm -hmm. even? Like this this wall here? Yes. Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Even, yeah, even. How many folds do you usually put on the inside? Uh you mean this kind? Yeah. Depending on how thick the the wall is, uh, I would say two to three times. Still keeping the uh, cylinder narrow. You can see that I do this a lot, removing the slip from my fingertip and put it back to work. Okay, so that I use a less water. You see that my splash pan is still dry because if you use water, the water don't stick, so water is gonna go and run it down to the drain. But if you use slip, you put it on, and when you don't feel slippy enough, just get some water and then just go and duplicate that. That's enough. And also, when you put it in, just grab from the bottom base and then you just go slowly and brush it over on the inner part, inside part of the cylinder. Okay. So, when you lift, both inside and outside is slippery. That's very important. Uh, measure. I don't want to throw the cylinder that is taller than this. Okay, maybe uh, two more inches. Slippery again. Grab in the slip and coat it on the inside.
So just keep my cylinder that is slightly wider than the cardboard that I'm going to drop in. You can only open it too wide that later on it's going to be hard for you to try to color it in. Okay. So you want to try to uh, push, squeeze from the bottom. Because if you try to squeeze, squeeze the air, you're going to trap the air. So try to start from the base all the way to the top. Um, after that, you want to smooth the uh, surface. Before I use my roller here, I usually like to clean up the bed. Right. So maybe this one. The thickness of the wall, uh, I would say a little bit more than quarter of an inch. Yeah, more than quarter of it. Is it thicker in the bottom or is it still thicker? Yeah, a little bit thicker on the bottom. Yeah, yeah thicker on the bottom. It's not rolling smoothly, so I will just use this one then. Okay. You want to roll a little bit smooth. This is a little bit too wide, so it kind of stuck in here, and I don't like that. Okay. When it's stuck, it's hard to roll. So you could use the sandpaper to send it down a little bit.
Okay, so I got uh, my texture rolled all over. All right, and two pieces of the newspaper do the trick, okay. Right, so it's nice and clean inside. No newspaper sticking on the wall. But uh, because the newspaper is gonna absorb the uh, slip, so it's a little bit too dry on the inside part. So before I stretch it, I usually like to uh, get it uh, nice and slippery. So put some water here to uh, lubricate it. Right. So without touching the uh, outside, you wanna stretch it slowly. Uh, let me pull to the top and then show you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just go. Yeah. Pull all the way. Uh, yeah, you could use whatever you think it's helping you. But um, I never use a rib inside. I don't know how to use a rib inside. So I think my finger is better than rib. So I usually use my finger. You could use a, a sponge, okay? Put a sponge, hold it in your hand. You might get it more smooth without putting too much of finger mark on it, okay? Can use that. Um, you can see that I take my time slowly, expand it. You don't want to expand it all at once too much at a time. Okay, slowly expand it. And you see that when I'm stretching and I still keep my rim, it's kind of small. So later on, I don't need to put too much ever try to close it if I want to close it. Actually, there's a piece of newspaper. I just see it. piece of newspaper. <laughs> yeah, I fell. Okay. Okay. Hey. 
And people, some people do use that torch, get even uh, stretch it even thinner, thinner wall. If you use a torch to dry the uh, surface more. Okay, so after a stretch, let me clean up the base a bit. So here, I'm going to move in. So I use a rip to push the ridge here little in that here okay let's double check the uh, shape maybe I can stretch a little bit more here The rim is a little bit uneven now. I could cut it. A little bit too thin there.
So I'm holding the uh, wooden knife quite steady and resting my hand right on the uh, splash pan. And just slowly cutting, cutting it down. Until it gets all the way down to the bat. So the base is smaller, the whole piece looks lighter. Uh, that's from the uh, fingerprint inside. Yeah, so how do you avoid that? Uh, this clay, I didn't wedge it good enough. So there's a little chunk inside. Yeah. So while I was lifting it, uh, I put too much finger lines on the inside. Uh, if you want to avoid the lines, pull it up your uh, wall slowly and make it more even. Right. So when you stretch, you don't see these lines. Yeah. Yeah, that's when, because this piece of clay uh, is a new clay. I never used it before, so I didn't know that you need to wedge a little bit more. Right. There's a little. So it's a it's a new clay. So, uh, but uh, the shape looks okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you still have time, right? Yeah, we start at uh, 10.45, it's an hour and a half. Yeah. Let's do uh, another sodium silicate, and this time I'm going to put some newspaper over it. Yeah kind of uh, masking some of the spot. Oh. Yeah. So why do you use um, a bat sometimes and just work on the wheel head other times? Uh, I'm just getting lazy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to be able to uh, pick it up from the wheel head, the best way it is put a bat on it. Okay. And also, if you're gonna throw something that is flat, like a white platter, mm -hmm. you need to have a bat. Yeah. Well, since we have bat here, <laughs> we could just so we'll use a bat. So when you're choosing your bat, you might want to choose the one that is flat. Okay, without, yes, yeah. you know, some of them, it's, it's been used for years and it warping, especially some of the uh, plastic ones. People heat it up, use the heat gun, and they warp. Lately, I've been buying plastic ones that came to me warped. Oh, came to you warp bad, already? I think it was a bad production one. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you want to choose a good one. Okay, this one is good.
So again, I'm throwing a uh, cylinder. Okay, and I wanna smooth the uh, surface. Clean up before I brush the uh, sodium silicate over. <laughs> Something about So I uh, dip it in the water, um, so that the newspaper will be able to uh, stick on the surface. The brush is getting dry. So I'm using the uh, newspaper to mask so some of the spot will not have the uh, sodium silicate or will, will have a smaller amount of sodium silicate over. Okay. 
ね。Uh, you will see that this, when the surface, when you brush the sodium silicate, it becomes shiny, and once it dry, it, it goes away. So you want to wait till that stage. Now, okay, <laughs> ten more minutes. Right, so just uh, stretch just like we did. Okay, so you will see that the difference, some spot crackle more, some spot crackle less, got more uh, variations on the one piece. Yeah, you want to stretch it because you want the uh, texture to come out, the crackle. If you don't stretch, you don't get that the texture.
just put my stamp on it. You know, before the clay dry, you can do pretty much everything to it to make it look more interesting. Okay, so that's the uh, demonstration on different textures. Roller texture, sort of silicate, chattering, you know, cutting. So hopefully it helps. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.